Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Shifter podcast. This time we have another member of the All Shift Happily Now Meditations here. I'm currently doing a very successful course with her where we purify and lead people into level four consciousness. Um, I consider her the healer of the All Shift Happily Now team and she's a subconscious freedom coach. Sarah Zula is with us. Hi and welcome. Hi, Tim. So good to see you and thank you for having me tonight. I'm excited to have this conversation. You are actually going out and purifying people. Uh, you do that on the All Shift Happily Now meditations. You do that in the Ticket to Ride into Level 4 Consciousness course and you also do that with your clients too. So. Let's start with a Rumi quote. He's saying, every path that is directed towards purification is the best path. Uh, would you agree? And what's your opinion on that? Thank you for starting this with a Rumi quote, because I adore him. So thank perfect quote to begin. And I think it's just beautifully said, and he nailed it, because any, any type of spiritual work that we do, any type of healing work that we do, any type of self-development work that we do carries with us. And when I say carries with us, it not only carries with us by rippling out into every single being we come across, into every single being that's in our lives, but it also ripples out beyond this incarnation, beyond this current point of the incarnation that we're expressing as now, healing work that we do carries with us. Wherever we go, there we are. And that quote last beyond this lifetime too people are in in the middle of this earth experience and we also teach that part of this comes from the installation which is like an artificial system that has been put onto earth designed to hinder the evolution of a lot of beings when a soul goes into level four consciousness and beyond how important is purification and what is purification even okay so i love this and I also think it's important that we talk about level four consciousness and what it entails so we can understand it. Now, I'll answer the question first for level for um, purification and what we mean by that. We all have the divine self that is behind any type of persona that we can, or mask we wear, or persona or personality we play as. And when we talk about a purification, what we really mean is just becoming more us, becoming more of who we really are. The subconscious mind is essentially all of the programming that gets placed upon us from coming into earth. And then we go about in our adult lives carrying out that programming and playing it out unconsciously. So we get that baseline programming from our caregivers, from our society, from the media, from the school system. So all of that programming is coming in and defining our subconscious mind, defining who we become as adults. Now, we also have programming that's passed down in our DNA from bloodlines of repeating the same cycles and behaviors, the same feelings, the same nervous system responses. However, we also have very important soul lessons that as a being, we came in here saying, I want to purify this. I want to free myself from this. I want to refine this. I want to experience this. And as a soul, we come here with a certain set of experiences that we know we came here to transcend because earth school is an amazing place to transcend. It's an amazing place to learn. It's an amazing place to do so quickly. So we have this subconscious mind that we're not consciously aware is running the show, but is actually controlling 95% of our day from our body and our internal responses. The subconscious mind is kicking into gear, something called the autonomic nervous system that causes our body to go Going to fight or flight or rest and restore. So think about that. Fight or flight is not a state of healing in the body, but the subconscious mind is what's in control of that. We might not want the same life that was imprinted upon us in our subconscious before we knew better. And the work that I do is support people in really practical ways to purify that to get rid of the programming that isn't who we are to begin with so they can express as the being that they know they truly are so as a governance expert i always think about state systems and it's very clear to me and to many 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 people 
how it would actually benefit the world if we change the the bigger concept of everything and that begins in the in the mind right mm -hmm. so and a lot of people and and people that are watching this they feel confronted by what this installation or this system this earth experience had has put onto them um and i did the math, the math and it's like almost 21000 hours of getting information and data into people's minds. If you only calculate um, the, the hours that people spent in schools. So what can a soul gain from releasing herself, himself uh, from this artificial earth installation that might be hindering them in ways that they might not even know? Amazing question and really beautiful. And that's really what we're here doing with this purification work. I do want to backtrack a little bit because you asked the question of the importance of purifying for level four consciousness. Like, how is it important to purify for level four consciousness? So I'd love to go back to that after this, if you'd like. But the thing about what happens for a soul when they do this work, when they free themselves of the limitations that were placed upon them from the installation, that were placed upon them from benevolent sources that wanted to keep them small, that wanted to keep them very astute consumers, that wanted to keep them not at their highest point of divinity, to be honest. What happens to a soul when they free themselves is they become they become who they've always known they were meant to be. People remember who they are. People align with why they came here when they do this. Because as soon as we dissolve ourselves from the limitations that are just in the way that are kind of like creating a murkiness in our consciousness, that are dragging us back to old dramas and old traumas, when we free ourselves from that, there's nothing left but our true divinity. And we all of a sudden become these creative beings that can just go out and create. Yeah, and that's actually what we're doing in Ticket to Ride, right? So, you know, me coming from a certain background, I would always explain the installation as uh, an artificial system that is here and designed to lower the evolutionary potential of humanity in total. And it's clearly made for, you know, certain groups on this planet that have a certain competitive uh, way and... Uh, just imagining that there are other life forms in the universe that might see uh, humans and human groups as uh, kind of a competition to themselves. Um, that is like the reason why the installation was placed onto here. But it's also affecting lots and lots of beings, um, human beings on this planet, but also beings that might come from other realities uh, and might have a sense about what it is to be in these other realities and then being confronted with what's happening in the Earth uh, system. So uh, I would always like explain it from a, from a governance perspective and tell them uh, certain institutions have been placed here, certain DNA changes so that beings become more aggressive in total and uh, lead these stupid wars, you know, where the, the species itself is like destructing itself instead of like going forward. Um, but I'm very curious about your opinion and where do you find that people can really feel the installation the most in their lives on a personal level? I think it's in what a lot of people would call like the matrix they use this word the matrix just to define what norm stream people just have accepted as natural so like the norm stream way which a lot of people have already freed themselves from but the norm stream idea of i go to school I go to college, I get a good job, I save money for my 401k, and then I retire, and then I can live my life after retiring. Or people are like, okay, I go to school, I get a good job, I get a good education, then I get married, I have kids. People feel this pressure to be married, to have kids. All of these things are a part of a system meant to confine people into a box of an idea of a society that serves a certain portion of humans. Now, so many people listening to this have already expanded their consciousness beyond any of those things having to be true. But the thing is, 
a lot of family members in their system might not. Religious systems, anything that people feel trapped I, I was in like, um, I was in New York City working for a big well-known company and I'm looking around and I'm like, what are we doing here? It's nice out. Why can't I go outside? I was like, I feel like I'm in prison. I'm looking around and I'm like, it feels like I'm sitting with a bunch of zombies. It felt so unnatural. Now there's also the effects of the installation. Like just the fact that we have to go to a grocery store and have to look for organic produce, what that means is look for produce that isn't full of pesticides is ridiculous. Like some of these things in the system is ridiculous, but the effect of that is that people aren't getting the nutrients which keep their life force and vitality down. So there's all of these things that were put in play to keep humans small, but what's motivating about it is that it didn't stop us. We are awakening, human beings are resourceful, human bodies can adapt, and we're able to ascend through all of it. So I think that's the most miraculous thing that with all those things put in place, the awakening is happening and it cannot be stopped. And the human spirit, when it chooses to ascend, it will. The human spirit, when it chooses to awaken, it will. And it's already happening. There's already too many beings who have chosen to awaken. It's already done. It's already happened. There is something called uh, mental mass. And that means the more beings we have that have a certain idea of how reality should be. Uh, and that means being uh, in the most uttermost creative uh, potential and reality, this will automatically change the way reality behaves, right? So mm -hmm. I do see that over thousands and thousands of years, there was some kind of um, rejection and suppression of spiritual knowledge and also keeping beings away from their true creative potential as those magical beings and embodiments that they actually are. What is going to change when we really dive into this work of working on ourselves and being guided in this? We shift our reality. So the system could be there, but when we heal, when we purify, we start playing in a different game of reality. And the system could be there, but we will be living in our own reality that matches the frequency that we're residing at. So we might be playing in the system, but we'll notice that the system starts morphing. It starts playing with us as we respect what's there. We're not going to say like overthrow the system. That's not what I'm here to do. That's not even what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is our power as creative beings. When we shift within, our world shifts without. The ancient Toltecs have a beautiful, the ancient Toltec tribe has a beautiful way of saying this. They say, we're all dreaming up our personal dreams of reality add up all those dreams and we get the collective dream of the planet. When we change the way we think we have to create reality, uh, it really opens up for literal real wonders. And, and that can include levitation too and mm -hmm. psychic effects. Coincidences happen and the most surreal happenings can happen too. And when we dive into that and we reject the limitations of how we think reality has to work, suddenly these things happen. And I've personally seen that many, 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 many times. My life has been uh, bizarre in certain moments <laughs> anyway, but I've seen that uh, over certain happenings too. But people will ask, what is level four consciousness like? Really literal wonders happen in the moment when we decide to not expect things to happen in the usual way, in the way that it has been trained to us. Again, 21,000 hours in school. Um, suddenly, the universe is open to create wonders. And it begins with this reality that we are even here talking to each other, which is absolutely, absolutely incredible, actually, if we really think about that. But I want to forward that question to you, Sarah. How would you experience that? I think it really sits in the premise of already being in the understanding of the connectedness of all of us. So I really want to take it back for a second. And what's coming through me to share is that if we can break down the core 
issues in the installation outside of the systems, if we can understand that anything that disconnects us from our true self and makes us think we need to go outside of us to create a connection to the divine, anything that disconnects us from our true self, anything that has disconnected us from nature herself, anything that causes us to think that we are separate from the person we are looking at, that we are separate from nature, that we are separate from the animals, from the plants, from everything that exists, from the universe, from our galactic family. Anything that makes us think that we are separate is not truth. And that's what the installation really has did. And if we think that we are separate, we suffer. If we think that we are separate from the form of disconnected, there is a sense of needing to belong that occurs. There's a sense of fear that gets kicked off. And that fear is then a result of that installation. Now, if we were to go into level four consciousness without purifying the lies in our psyche, we'll just experience more of those limitations. Because what I would think about level four consciousness is a lot of things that a lot of people experience. Time doesn't work in the same way. It's more malleable. It speeds up. It slows down more quickly. The wondrous natures of reality start opening up. Systems that seem like it would take a long time to get something done, something magical happens and then it shifts in our favor like these are the things these miracles are happening all the time as a result as a result of level four consciousness i don't know about you but if i'm designing a civilization i don't necessarily want a bunch of beings at level four consciousness who are selfish and who are manipulating other beings to get what they want I don't want that. <laughs> like what I want is a state of purified beings who are doing their best to be of service to the all. Purified beings who are doing their best to walk on this planet as a loving being. Purified beings who are doing their best to spread love, to spread creativity, to spread joy, to spread beauty. Like that's a level four consciousness I want to be a part of because in level four consciousness, we're remembering that we're all one. We're remembering the interconnectedness of us all. So then that energy amplifies, so it impacts us all. Well, don't get me started about what I want in a society, because <laughs> that would take me forever to explain. And I have plans. I have, give me seven years. Give me well, seven, anyway, years. Seven, seven years. Give me seven years, Tim says. <laughs> okay. Uh, one way to dismantle the installation and live in a holistic, wondrous way is um, is also to connect with other beings. Uh, and I talked about this mental gravitation thing, the mental mass that people can create. And that is also part of how the installation works. You know, there are like billions of people that might not be psionically very well trained, but they stick to these systems and to these beliefs that have been pushed into their minds for thousands and thousands of hours. Um, we do that in Ticket to Ride very personally, bringing people together and purifying them, giving them the right knowledge and all the techniques they need. Uh, I personally am I'm very, also very committed to this community and, and collecting these souls and bringing them together. And uh, you're part of this too, of this wonderful group that we have with Sarah Brexman and Kadish Olsen. Um, it's just amazing, and, and many, many more speakers, too. Um, and I want to mention that because we come together once a month and we do the All Shift Happily Now meditations, uh, and we are increasing the mental mass for this idea. All Shift Happily Now, which is absolutely, for me, the right way, and, and we've seen that many, many times in these ancient scriptures that happiness and being in love with the universe and being in your home state with the universe in this loving connection whatever personal happiness is that this is the most stable form of the universe ever join these all shift happily now meditations that we do on the 24th of each month in 2024 uh you will see sarah zula sarah brexman cosm who's been here too Pedrich Olsen, it's our shadow worker, and me, uh, and we do this all together with the community. But for the last question, Sarah, and I want you to take us away in, on that. Uh, everyone knows how much I believe in the coming together 
uh, the transparency and, and the work that we can do together as creative beings, as embodiments of the universe, where we have a responsibility, but also this wonderful, beautiful ability to do and design our, our universes together. Take it away and tell, tell people why Ticket to Ride is so good for them. <laughs> okay, so tell people why Ticket to Ride is so good for them. I mean, the premise of your question was a lot about coming together, and there is something that is so magnificent. I mean, in our All Shift Happily Now meditations, we are lighting up the global grid of consciousness. And because of mental mass, that becomes more powerful and amplifies it, which what that means is it makes other beings who are so close to walking over that bridge to their healing, to their next level of consciousness, it almost like clears the path for them. So it's so much easier to walk across that bridge because the force is so strong. They're picking up, even if they're shut down, they're picking up on possibility. They might get an idea, maybe I'll try meditation that comes out of nowhere, but it's really coming from that mental mass of energy, putting out love, putting out peace, putting out healing, putting out possibility and people just get ideas. They just pick up on ideas and they're like, hmm, maybe I'll go to this class. Now, when we come into a group for healing, it amplifies the healing in ways that can't be quantified because it's almost like the strongest points of the group in all different areas, hold the line for everyone else. So let's say that someone's really, really strong in their abundance. That strength holds the line for everyone else to rise to. With our group every week, it's like they click back into gear and that consistency matters because something that may have just jarred someone off for a little while comes back into alignment every week consistency, consistently and it just becomes who they are. So just being together in the group is a powerful thing, let alone what we are doing every week. Like we are bringing in trainings and information that frees our minds, but not only frees our minds, that brings all of this higher consciousness into our practical lives. And I mean, Tim, you can go off about this too. We have audio tools that are supporting people and actually feeling that frequency, aligning with that frequency. And then we have a whole group doing that meditation that's aligning people with level four consciousness, what we are doing in Ticket to Ride into level four consciousness is just absolutely phenomenal. It is such a beautiful thing to be a part of. And it's an incredible training for people who are ready to expand their minds. I can say that it even purified something within me because uh, I come from a background where being professional means uh, that you're looking at demographic groups only uh, and less uh, on the the being the real personal being and to be personally there for beings for three months and to see them rise that's a lot of work to be very honest but i've seen some beings coming off from this course as very very strong very strong individuals uh, and i want these beings i want them to be new leaders in this world and i want them to be new leaders for their worlds for their loved ones for their friends and for the whole new world that we are creating individually, but also as a group together. That being said, thank you so much for being our guest, Sarah Zula. And for everyone at home, thank you so much for tuning into this Shifter podcast. And see you next time.